The Oscars is when Hollywood's glitterati gather together and a special chosen few get to receive the highest accolade possible for their hard work. But what if you took the Oscars and made it wrestling? And no, I'm not talking about this. My name is Stephanie Chase and this is a look at WWE's 1997 Slammy Awards. The 1997 Slammy Awards. Now, before we get into the awards, let me remind you to please hit that subscribe button. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and give it a share. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at Stephanie M. Chase, as well as on Instagram. The WWE introduced the Slammy Awards in 1986, and so far there have been 13 editions, all very different. But the one I want to talk to you about today is 1997's, because for me, 1997 was the best time in pro wrestling. And this Slammy Awards was wild. WWE presented this award show, which was in kayfabe, the night before WrestleMania 13. And I had this on VHS as a kid, and I loved watching it so much. And I want you all to know exactly why this is one of the best bits of programming that WWE has ever put on. So let's get into it. The Slammy Awards 1997 were held at the Western Hotel in Chicago. They were the night before WrestleMania 13 and they were broadcast on the USA Network. First things first, the Slammy Awards, the staging is a ring, which looks so cool. Our host for the evening is Todd Pettengill, who starts by doing his best like Billy Crystal impersonation. And he has a whole song lined up, which parodies a number of popular songs all making references to the wrestlers in the audience there's way too much in this song to possibly get into it literally goes forever but it was so incredibly entertaining there is of course jokes about ted turner mcmahon's got plenty of nuts ted turner don't he talks about sid hearing voices he says that nothing rhymes with sultan which i'm not sure that's true his Shawn michaels bit is set to summer loving from greece you want your heart broke go see this kid Shawn Michaels, no friend of Sid. How you doing, Shawn? We want you back. And that lady wants you in the rack. Does he not mean sack, though? Sonny's song is to the tune of Sonny, because of course. Sonny! He talks about Flash Funk having booty calls, which is another thing that makes this show so interesting because it's 1997, so we're not in the Attitude Era yet, but you can see by some of the content of this show how WWE was moving into more adult programming. He said that he bet $100 on Goldust being straight, and he won. He uses a theme from Cheers for the Legion of Doom. Their Legion of Doom. Their spikes are in the back. He goes to Triple H and China, and Triple H at first looks like he's enjoying it. Then he quickly catches on to the terrible joke that Pettengill is about to make about China and completely changes his expression into anger. Now, once the song is over, we then go to Jerry the King Lawler and Vince McMahon, who are our commentators for the evening. Yes, this award show has commentary. As with the Times, Jerry Lawler mocks Vince McMahon for having a toupee. Of course, we all found out when he got his head shaved years later that it was actually real this whole time. It was Mr. McMahon's real hair all along. Lawler promises this will be different than any award show because the people here are gonna thank themselves. Let's see if he's right about that one. Our first presenter is Ahmed Johnson. He presents the new sensation award that he won the year before. He said that he was given a speech by an agent, but he's not gonna read it because he's not a puppet. If I was a puppet, I'll be in another federation. Our nominees are Steve Austin, Mark Merrow, Flash Funk, Mankind, and Rocky Maivia. Then we have a Moonlight situation on our hands. La La Land. Moonlight, best picture. Ahmed Johnson announces the winner as Stone Cold Steve Austin, and then tells us, no, it's Rocky Maivia. Stone, I don't think so. What? Rocky Maivia. A very young Rocky Maivia comes up to accept the award. He thanks God and his wife at the time, Danny. Now Rocky, I mean The Rock, I mean Dwayne, and Danny did eventually divorce, but they still work together and appear to have an amicable relationship. But we'll get back to that. Rocky also dedicates his award to his dad and the headbangers are seen doing some fake crying in the audience. Todd Pettengill then decides to rub some salt in the wound to Steve Austin by revealing that the voting was really close and he only just missed out on getting the award. Steve, who is there with his ex-wife Jeannie, which 
there's a whole lot of history there. But she was responsible for coming up with the Stone Cold nickname. Anyway, Steve takes this as an opportunity to get up on stage and just deliver a speech anyway. He does a full on promo. He accuses Rocky of voting for himself. I wonder what your phone bill was, son, every time you called in and voted for yourself. And says that he could take that Intercontinental Championship right from your ass. He then calls out Ken Shamrock and ends by hyping up his match against Bret Hart the following night. This was really, really cool to see Austin going full promo here in 1997 before his babyface turn. Then we are informed that there is a Miss Slammys competition and the voting lines are now open, which made me think, wow, is this actually live? They went ahead with putting this live on TV. Our nominees for Miss Slammy are Sable, Sunny, Marlena, China, and the Funk Ets. Kids, you must be 18 years old or have your parents' permission before calling. And we are told that later on there will be a talent competition as well as a swimsuit competition, which of course Jerry Lawler cannot wait for. We then have the award for Dress to Kill, which is presented by the Honky Tonk Man and Cindy Margolis. She's described as the queen of the internet and soon to be a big movie star, but spoiler alert. When Cindy walks out, we see Sable clapping for her. Then in a bit, we see Sunny looking pissed because she hates other women and this is a theme of the night. These two do some terrible humor between them. Honky Tonk tells Cindy that she's been spending too much time with Rocky Maivia. And I wonder what Danny had to say about that. The nominees are Shawn Michaels, Sable, Marlena, Flash Funk and The Undertaker. Sable wins, she gets up on stage, and Mark Merrow not only comes with her, but starts talking for her. And he makes a stupid joke about seeing her naked. These two are married guys. No one told Sable that the awards is in kayfabe, so she gives the most sincere speech possible. She even thanks the McMahons. And I would like to thank the McMahons. So kayfabe totally dead, because at this time Vince McMahon was not openly the owner of the WWF on television. This is pre-Montreal Screwjob. However, she does thank Miss Sandra, who was the costume designer for WWE at the time. She now works for AEW, and I think that's really lovely. She is someone in this business that does not get enough recognition, and she is responsible for so many iconic outfits, ring gear, everything. We then get a clip of Sunny, this is before Sable kind of became her own character, but Sunny, I think, could see the writing on the wall and she just hates her. Then for no reason, the Nation of Domination come in with their theme being performed live. You're just fashionably late, you know? This is fashionably late. They just walk into this hotel, conference room, whatever, with their theme being wrapped. We then have super fans George and Adam presenting the Tattoo You Award. Now, who were George and Adam? They were two WWE super fans that would be shown on different WWE shows doing silly things like camping outside the arena and stuff like that. George and Adam were not actually paid actors. They were WWF employees. They worked for the company's Coliseum video department and they were handpicked by Kevin Dunn and Vince McMahon to portray the two obsessed WWF fans. George's real name was George Germanicos, and he is currently the Vice President of Media Clearance and Research for WWE. He has been working with WWE since the 90s. Adam's real name is Adam Panucci. He is currently the Senior Vice President of Domestic International TV Production, and he makes many of the great video packages that we see on WWE TV, and he has been with the company since 1994. So it's just so funny how, like, only in wrestling, these two guys would be actually guys with office jobs that are given these goofy roles on TV. The nominees here are Drew Barrymore for a start. I don't know why they thought that Drew Barrymore might turn up at the Slammys. Then we have Crush, Shawn Michaels, The Undertaker, and Tommy Lee, though I suppose you have more chance of getting Tommy Lee than Drew Barrymore. The winner is The Undertaker, George and Adam freak out. The Undertaker! <laughs> they announce his name, but he doesn't come. They try again, and he still doesn't come. Then they do the Beetlejuice trick and try for a third time, and all of a sudden, the lights go out. The Undertaker then gets a full entrance in this Chicago hotel conference room 
which is pretty hilarious. He just walks in through a door, like imagine him waiting in the lobby, getting ready to do this and walks towards the stage. When he gets to the stage, he looks at George and Adam and realizes that George has wet himself. Did you think, oh my God. <laughs> I wouldn't make it. <laughs> Patience is a virtue. Yes, George pissed his pants because The Undertaker did his spooky entrance. The Undertaker actually gives um, a really good speech about his tattoos and it's actually very cool. As a kid, I was really obsessed with this moment. Seeing The Undertaker in this setting, even though it's still in kayfabe, it just humanized him a little bit more for me as a child. Then to add to the camp humor of it all, The Undertaker, after getting his award and making his big goth entrance, just goes and takes his seat at one of the normal tables. It is so funny how we're meant to believe that all these guys hate each other so much that they're all gonna have these big blow-off matches the next day at WrestleMania, yet they are all content with just sitting in this room with one another and nothing really going down. Then we have the first of our Miss Lammy's talent contest. The Funkettes perform a dance to a lot of songs, including the Prodigy's Firestarter. Vince McMahon is so scared that people might change the channel during this dance that he constantly has to interject comments over it. Next up, Todd Pettengill introduces JR, calling him classy, so he's obviously not heard any of his recent commentary. He's there to present Match of the Year, which they introduced introduced with a video package using the whole shield entrance bit at the start of it which was quite fun so this one is won controversially some might say by sean and brett for the wrestlemania 12 iron man match i love that match everyone i know didn't so whatever but the Slammy Awards have spoken. Sean and Brett are the winners. Sean is brilliant. He gives a pretty earnest speech and then says, I won that match. Sean here is in full sexy boy mode. He has a suit jacket on, but he fans himself with cards on his table for the ladies. And then at some points he takes the jacket off to reveal he's wearing a vest top underneath rather than a shirt. Brett, of course, is way too serious. We get a plug for some WrestleMania hockey jerseys. Next, it's Best Hair, presented by the Legion of Doom. They make a joke about The Undertaker needing to supply his fans with catheters. Perhaps you need to supply your fans with some catheters. And this has stuck with me ever since I was a child. I don't even think this joke is funny, but for some reason, it has stuck with me for over 20 years. To the point where when I once went through a really scary incident in a hospital and they told me it could get to the point where I needed a catheter, I laughed thinking about Hawk and Animal. This was won rightly by Triple H, who at this time had the most luscious blonde hair I had ever seen. Next is the Loose Screw Award that is presented by Sonny and Captain Lou Albano. Sonny is just constantly on the whole time, doing anything she can for tension. She's like fawning all over Todd Pettengill. The nominees for this award include Kramer from Seinfeld. Yes, Kramer from Sideville gets nominated for this award. It is eventually won by Mankind. He gets up to make a speech accompanied by Paul Bearer, who takes the microphone and says that It is no secret who's the real loosest screw in the World Wrestling Federation, Miss Sonny. So take that however you want. Mankind gives a great speech that he ends by thanking someone who's My inspiration in wrestling. Someone who's been like a father to me. Mr. Aldo Montoya. What? Aldo Montoya? Next, it's Marlena's talent, which is being able to guess the brand of cigars while blindfolded. Respect. We then have Owen Hart coming up to present the award for best bow tie, but he thinks he's the winner. Artist of the Millennium Award. And he goes on to continue this gimmick he'd been doing since last year's Slammys about the number of Slammy Awards he's won. Two times Slammy Award winner! He takes the award, goes off stage, and then he pushes a waiter into Vader. This could be trouble. Oh! Oh no! That waiter- But hang on a second, that waiter looks familiar. Oh my God, it is Vince Russo. Vince Russo getting some camera time here. For some reason, Sable's talent is karate and not the grind. Are you boys ready for the grind? I can't hear you. 
JR. Then we have Road Dog doing a performance of his song, Something Gone Wrong. And I have to say, I am no fan of Road Dog, but I thought this was excellent. Baby, something going wrong. Everybody talks about With My Baby Tonight as his signature song, but you are sleeping on this one. Go look it up, Something's Gone Wrong by Road Dog. And you can see in the background Jim Johnston there, who created so many iconic wrestling themes, playing guitar and leading the band. This leads us nicely to the Best Entrance Song Award, which is called Number One with a Bullet. That's won by The Undertaker. Now, all night people have been shouting, Kill the Clown at Doink. So The Undertaker attempts humor and says, The clown's gonna need an Undertaker real soon. If only he'd carried this energy through to his current one-man shows, they might actually be entertaining. And he tells the fans to rock in peace. Then we have the swimsuit competition. First out is Sunny. Ken Shamrock is loving it. Then it's China's turn. But Triple H comes up and he says that he is withdrawing China from the competition. But before he does that, he does tease taking his pants off. He said that China is a rock hard killer and basically describes the other women as like plastic Barbie doll types and he doesn't want her associated with them. He then makes a very distasteful joke about Sunny. We know what her only talent is and they can't show it on national TV. And I got a best friend that says she's not very good at that either. Next out in their bikinis are the funk ads. George the Animal Steel loves it. Marlena comes up in a gold bikini with her cigar and gets a clap from Shawn Michaels. Then finally, we have Sable who comes out in something that I struggle to describe as a swimsuit. It's a couple bits of material, mostly mesh as well. Mark Merrow pretends to be embarrassed. <laughs> Ken Shamrock changes his vote from Sunny to Sable. She's wearing the least and doing the most. And yeah, wrestling in the late 90s, guys. Brian Pillman then comes up to present Best Finisher and he calls what we've just seen, a glorified TNA exhibition, and somewhere in that room, a light bulb goes off in Jeff Jarrett's head. We get a shot in the audience of Cindy Margolis sitting with The Rock. Someone tell Danny what is going down on national television. Sean wins. He comes out sans jacket and said, So I had to disrobe. No offense to you, Hart family. And then he looks at Brett and says, I beat you with that move too. The best couple award is then hilariously presented by Jerry Lawler and Vince McMahon. If you've never seen Vince in this era, you have to go back and watch him. It is wild how different he is on TV than the Mr. McMahon character he became. The winner of best couple is Goldust and Marlena. They even beat Bill and Hillary Clinton. Goldust, no mic skills. He's way too quiet at the start of the speech. My beautiful darling, I guess. And Marlena, once again makes allusions to gold dust size and stature but without you i would have never had the big one we then have china's talent even though she has been withdrawn from the competition don't waste your money voting for her she's out her talent was weightlifting then sunny's talent is her music video for i know you want me I think if it was real talent, she would have performed live with the band, like, come on, if Road Dog can do it, why can't you? But yeah, we get like a very brief clip of her I Know You Want Me music video. We then have Bob Backlund and like a rando shock jock, because they couldn't afford Howard Stern, present the Larry Flint Freedom of Speech Award. I will not be demonetized by getting into Larry Flint. It's not worth it. Jerry Lawler thinks he's won. He comes up to accept the award. But he's told it's not him. The winner is Stone Cold Steve Austin. But he says that he's been told that they're running short on time. I've been instructed we're running short on time, so I'll go ahead and bottom line it. So Stone Cold Steve Austin, the anti-authority character, goes along with this and delivers just a short speech aimed at Bret Hart. But he then finally does what everyone's been wanting all night and he kills the clown. He goes and just beats up Doink and a brawl ensues. The hitman, and Stone Cold. Oh, 
We then have NFL player Walter Payton out to present the star of the highest magnitude award. And this is won by The Undertaker, who takes time to thank his crew. And my crew. Yes, the BSK. And what a motley crew they were. We then get the Lifetime Achievement Award presented by Psycho Sid and Gorilla Monsoon. Sid has never been a great public speaker and he certainly wasn't one on this night. First of all, I want to say never in one time in my whole life have I been scared of the darkness, dead man. He wants to hype up his WrestleMania match, but Gorilla Monsoon is here to do serious business. Obviously, uh, Sid and I have different agendas. I'm here to present this award. The winner of this award is Arnold Skoland. And oddly, Arnold Skoland's wife is someone I always have a memory of. No disrespect, but his speech is a snooze fest. We are then informed that the USA Network is letting the Slammy Awards go into overtime. So maybe Austin could have done a proper speech. The results of the Miss Slammy Award are then in and Sable is the winner. We see a shot of China looking pissed, even though she was withdrawn. And Sonny is furious. There would have been money in these two having an actual feud, but I don't think Sonny would have been able to do it. But she is so mad, she hates Sable. And with that, the awards end, but we get a close-up of The Undertaker sitting nicely at his table with his three Slammy Awards. Then Vince and Lawler present a recap video of the entire award show. This was so much fun to watch and reminisce on. As I said, it is my favorite time in wrestling history, not just in WWF, but there was WCW as well. We're just on the cusp of the Attitude Era and things are changing. They have so many great stars here. It's so cool to see The Undertaker in this period, but then it's great also to see Steve Austin and The Rock before they became the absolute wrestling icons that they are now. You have Sean and Brett still in the WWF. The Montreal screw job has not happened yet. It is just a perfect time capsule of what WWF was like at this time. So WWE did not host another Slammy Awards until 2008 which is wild so during the attitude era we didn't have this i can't believe it that we i feel robbed i feel absolutely robbed that this was not going on during the attitude era and i think by the time you got to like 2008 the magic of these kind of things were gone like the slammies as you see here all the wrestlers are in character we're keeping kayfabe but there's something just so great about the characters that we had there at this time. There's something where you can kind of suspend your disbelief. The show the whole time feels like you don't know what's gonna happen next and it feels so natural and organic and unscripted as well. And I don't think any of the later iterations of the Slammy Awards were ever able to capture that magic. And they just did them during a special episode of Raw. To me, the 1997 Slammy Awards was the peak of that era of WWF before like all the shit went down when they were still in new generation era but like the attitude era was about to take over. It is truly a golden age in the WWF's history and I am so glad that they did a Slammy's that year. Such a great almost like parody of award shows like the Oscars. Here are people whose characters allow them to not be gracious when they're accepting awards. Uh, they're allowed to like call out their enemies during their speeches. Well, well, well. I see some familiar faces here today. Some welcome, some not so welcome. <laughs> it looks as if I've had the last laugh. We have scuffles happening. We have great reactions caught when other people win awards. It's just a great way to do a parody of awards culture. Awards culture is kind of sycophantic, just a lot of rich people patting themselves on the back. It's kind of disingenuous as well. That's kind of my feeling on stuff like the Oscars and the Grammys. There's always so much controversy about the voting in these awards too and who gets certain advantages. And it's just great to see like the WWE take that idea and just flip it the way that they did here. I absolutely love this. And I would recommend you all check out the full show if you haven't already seen it, or if you, like me, had not seen it since you were a kid. That's all for me. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also go find me on Twitter, 
Instagram, TikTok, at Stephanie M. Chase, and you can check out links for some other ways to support me in the description box. Until next time. Have a nice day!